you are good. You are good. And that authentic love is that love that does not have any sting of regret ever. Authentic love will never, never uh, throw you into the confession line. Authentic love is not a love that's going to ask you to lie or to hide ever. It is 100% freeing. It is absolutely full of joy. It is something that you just can't buy. You can't get from a pill. Nothing. Authentic love. And when you experience that love, ah, you know, you know, you're onto something. You see, the best example for authentic love, especially as a Christian, we look at it and we know it's going to be the crucifix. It'll always be Christ on the cross as the first and the best example of authentic love. And you don't read in the gospel that Jesus was wrestled to the cross. You don't read in the gospel that Jesus um, was forced down, that his hands, the soldiers had to pry from the center of his body because he wouldn't give him his arms. No, you read. And if you can think about this and use your imagination, Jesus knelt down on his own volition into the dirt, laid down, turned around, put his back upon that cross. They didn't have to fight him like they did the other two, the criminals on his right and his left. He gave him his arms, and he gave him his legs freely. There was no complaining, there was no yelling, and he gave us his body. I mean, all the things that Jesus did, everything that you read about, he taught us, he loved us, he cured people, he probably got back from the dead for the, you know, for the love of God, and that's awesome. But the very last thing he did is he, he gave us his body. It's so sad today that when we get into a relationship, sometimes that's the very first thing that we hand over, is our body. I mean, that's all of you. Oh. Mm. See, authentic love tells us that there's a right way, that there's a process how love is formed, how love matures, in the appropriate time that you want to give your whole self to someone. You wouldn't want to give your whole self and your whole body to anybody who just says, I love you, baby. You wouldn't want to give your whole self and your whole body over someone who's been dating you for a few months or even a few years. Man, you want to wait till somebody like commits. And I mean commits in, in, in terms of like in front of family and friends, ideally in front of the Lord God Almighty, and will say aloud words that will basically mean, I forsake all others in this universe except you. You are the only one I want because you are good. That kind of seems like a good time that you would give your whole self to somebody. See, kind of just kind of makes sense to me now, you know? I'm like, yeah, so like, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a good person. I'm an amazing person. And I just want to give myself over to anybody. You know, you got to like know your worth. You got to know your value. And know you're not just going to hang yourself over because emotions run high. Beautiful words might be said. Candles are lit. Ah, oh, see, we're, we're worth even more than that. See, that night I had a choice between the authentic or I had a choice between the imitation. And the imitation is one that we are all very familiar with. Because we live in a broken world and we're broken people. No big deal. But it's a love that exists and it's an imitation love. It has a lot of promises, but they're always empty. It says, you do what you want, it's your body, your choice, whenever you feel like you're ready. Just take this quiz to find out. <laughs> Cosmo recently told a 12-year-old girl that they believe in what she was saying, that she just might be ready, but it might be best to wait a few more months when she turns 13. This is the advice our culture and our world is giving people. It says, hey, listen, if you've got a problem with this type of love, don't worry about it. We're going to give you a pill. We'll give you a doctor. We'll give you therapy. We'll give you an abortion, whatever it might be. There's always a sting of regret. There's always a sting of the question of, is this right? Is this love? I don't know. You see, authentic love carries no question mark with it. Ever. It just doesn't. That's the beauty of it, because it's real. It's not imitation. It's, it's authentic. That night, I made a choice that would forever change my life. Between the authentic and the imitation, I chose the imitation. I lost my virginity that night. I, um, I gave away something to somebody who never deserved it. Um, I remember immediately after it happened, I got up and I went to the bathroom and I locked the door. And uh, I turned on the faucet so that he wouldn't hear me cry. And... Uh, I remember like leaning up against the door and like sliding down and just just sobbing. I mean, just really crying. And 
I remember asking myself the question of like, you know, is this really love? You know? Um, I mean, I really like him. I say I love him, but I don't, I don't know now. Um, and this is a great guy. I mean, he didn't force me to do anything. I made my decision all on my own. I think the fact that I asked those questions probably answered them for me. I think I was so scared and nervous to believe that the Lord won't fail me, even when it comes to the desires of my heart, that I lowered the bar and I just accepted something that was available at that time, you know, and I, um, I gave in to imitation love. I gave in to those, those that what I thought was going to make me happy, what I thought would make us happy as a couple. It'll make us closer. It'll make us better. I mean, a few days later, we broke up and you realize that's not exactly how I wanted that to ha happen. You're kind of left with those feelings, obviously, of regret, not just because the relationship ends, but the, re the regret that I experienced immediately after in the bathroom of, like, what just happened, you know? You see, I think I was so nervous to believe that what God had planned for me was actually my happiness, that actually God cares about my heart. He wants me to be happy. He knows what will make me happy. He also knows what will also make me sad and kind of make me re re regret things. That's why he, a while back, came up with those ten things, you know? Kind of makes sense now, too. So, I wish at 15, I would have, I guess I just, I wish I would have realized that what, that, that what he had in store for me will make me happy. Even if I didn't know it right then and there. Even if I would have to wait for it. God forbid, wait for it, you know. But see, he did. And in fact, what God had in store for me was amazing. My love story that God has and continues to work in my life to this day, it's phenomenal. It's the best ever, in my opinion, for my life, right? But I love it. I love how God has fulfilled that in my heart and in my life. And he has made good with, I will not fail you, Leah. I will not forsake you. 